Hi, and welcome to Food for Health. My name is Cheryl McWilliams. I am a wellness specialist here at Midcoast Parkview Health, and we want to welcome you back to our programming. This evening, we are going to demonstrate an incredibly simple recipe, but it's one that my family really enjoys, and it ties in nicely with our talk for this evening, so I hope you enjoy. It is, I call it sauteed cabbage, for lack of a better word. You can come up with your own name. But basically, you take a head of cabbage. Now, this one is tiny. I actually like a bigger head of cabbage, but this is, this is what I had. Um, cauliflower, and you're gonna mix those two with some seasonings, and that's pretty much it. So any of my savory dishes always have garlic and onion. And in my opinion, if a little bit of garlic and onion is good, then a whole lot of garlic and onion is better. So I, generally speaking, will usually saute my garlic and onion in a little salt because I find that the salt, if you saute your garlic and onion in salt, it brings out the flavor of the onion better and it actually brings out a little bit of the sweetness, which adds a nice dimension. Another thing that I often do, which I'm not doing tonight, is I like to saute different kinds of onions together. So maybe a yellow onion with a purple or a spring onion with a white. Um, I'm not doing that tonight, but that is something that in my savory dishes I often do. So for the onion, I just simply dice the onion and I put it in my pan. Now when I saute, um, you'll notice that I'm not using oil. I'm using um, vegetable broth in place of the oil to saute in. And for tonight, I did buy vegetable broth, which pained me greatly because I ran out of it in my own kitchen. I usually make my own and it's so easy to make and it's so much cheaper. I spent like $4 on this, this crazy container of um, vegetable broth, which will never have the flavor, the robust flavor that, that you'll get when you make it at home. But I didn't have any, so here you go. You'll use about two to four tablespoons, um, just enough to, to saute it. Now when I make my vegetable broth at home, I take leftover vegetable pieces, so like the stems from, from the cauliflower, the stems from broccoli, the end pieces of carrot and celery, the end pieces of the onion that I just threw away, I would take off the brown paper and put that in a pot as well. So whatever end pieces I have, the stems from mushrooms, any of that kind of stuff, I just simply put it in a pot, cover it with water and let it simmer on the back of my stove. And I'll let it simmer for a couple of hours and it will just cook right down. It'll get all of the color and the flavor out of those vegetables. And then I'll pour it through a sieve and I've got this amazing, wonderful vegetable broth that I didn't have to buy. And I'll have at least a quart of it, sometimes more, depending upon you know how many vegetables I'm working with. And I usually just keep that in a jar in my refrigerator. And I use that for when I'm sauteing or when I'm making, say, a soup and I, I need a base for my soup. If I'm not gonna use it all fairly quickly, then I will pour it into ice cube trays and I will freeze those. And then when I wanna saute something, I can just pop out an ice cube of, of that broth and use that for sauteing. Uh, it's a wonderful way to use those end pieces of your vegetables so that you're getting the full amount of nutrition available in the food that you work so hard to purchase. You know, food's expensive and we want to get as much, you know, bang for the buck as we can. And I hate to see, you know, all that nutrition just go in the trash. Uh, I always like to use it as much as possible. So there's my onion. Just diced it right up there. And I'm gonna get this going. Now I add to that garlic. I've shared with you before that when I deal with garlic, I always deal in bulk. You know, we grow our own garlic in our garden 
And uh, so at the end of the season, in the fall, when I pull it, we'll have a garlic processing party. <laughs> and uh, I will peel it all, stick it in a, in a blender or a food processor and just whiz it down so it's minced. And then I spread that also in an ice cube tray and I'll come out with little, you know, cubes of garlic. And I keep that in the freezer. And so when I want fresh garlic, I've got it because my experience with the, the stuff that you buy in the store, the already minced garlic in the, in the jars and cans, it just doesn't have much flavor. And I like a full, robust flavor in any of my food, um, but particularly in these savory kinds of dishes. So you're just gonna saute that down and you're gonna cook it um, until those onions are a bit translucent and your kitchen will smell lovely, which is kind of fun. And I, like I said, always do it in a little salt. I think the recipe I said one teaspoon, but honestly, usually I start off with about a half a teaspoon and then adjust from there. And what I find is that when I saute my onion and garlic in salt, I end up actually using less salt in the overall recipe because those onion pieces and garlic pieces will take on the flavor of the salt and they permeate your dish such that you're getting a little piece of salt permeated through your dish, you're not having to add extra. And when I do that, I generally um, will cut the sodium content of my dishes in half, um, which is kind of nice, if, particularly if you're needing to be careful with your, with your sodium. So while that is cooking, then I will prepare the cabbage. And I'm not particular, and a lot of people don't, the only way they eat cabbage is in coleslaw. But I like to put cabbage in lots of things. When I lived in China, I thought I never wanted to see another cabbage in my life because that's pretty much all we ate all winter was cabbage and onions. Because <laughs> at the time that I lived there, there just wasn't a lot available. But I learned some pretty amazing ways to prepare cabbage there that I had never learned here and I was so grateful to have that experience um, to know that you can eat cabbage in ways other than just in coleslaw. So for me I just take the core out, you saw me just slice that, that triangular piece out and I just chop it. Pretty big rough pieces here, nothing fancy. And I dump it in. It's not quite translucent here with the onions, but almost. Um, so for the purposes of tonight, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I've got my onions and garlic. Now I've got my cabbage in. I'm just gonna break it up a bit. And that's gonna cook right down. Now I don't cook it until it's mushy. A lot of people, when they, when they cook their, car, their cabbage, they cook it until it's just a mushy mess. And I like to have some substance and some texture to my food. Um, so I, I don't cook it down until it's just a mushy mess. I'm gonna stir that right in there. And you wanna keep an eye because sometimes when you're working with broth instead of oil, sometimes you might have to add a little bit more which I am going to here.
So while that is cooking down a bit, I'm going to prepare the cauliflower. I'm going to grab the lid here. Now, when I work with cauliflower, I destem it. And these little pieces here, if I'm making some cauliflower centered dish, like maybe a cauliflower curry or something where the cauliflower is sort of the main thing, then I'll leave this stem on. But for the purposes of this, I don't want to have a big chunk of cauliflower. So I will just simply chop off that piece and then I break apart the little bite-sized florets. And uh, it makes it a little bit easier to deal with. I will keep this and sometimes I will shred it and make it into like a coleslaw, like a, a cauliflower kind of coleslaw thing if, the, if I have a plenty of it. But if I just have a few of these, then I'll set it aside for when I make my broth. And I will, I will accumulate two or three days worth of vegetable ends, vegetable pieces, um, until I have you know a little dish that I can, I can make broth with. So you're just chopping off that tail in there and then breaking it apart into little bite-sized pieces. And because this was such a small head of cabbage, that's about all I'm gonna do um, for this recipe. I'm using cauliflower, but you could use broccoli uh, just as well. Let's see how we're doing here. Yeah, we're coming along nicely. So I would cook this down a bit further, but again, for the sake of time, I won't do that for tonight. But you get an idea of what's happening there. The underneath pieces are already done. The pieces on the bottom, it's more wilted than cooked to, to death, right? I'm from the South and we often, we fry it to death or boil it to death. and. Uh, we don't want to do that here. So once that's, once that's cooked down a bit, then I am going to add my cauliflower pieces. Or it could be broccoli. Kind of fun to see the green and the white mixed together. I am going to add just a little bit more broth here. And we'll let that cook down a bit. Now, I'm a fan of trying to, to make things as simple as possible. And I want to feed my family and myself nutritious food but I don't have a lot of time to spend, you know, I don't have all day to spend in the kitchen, right? So I tend to make a lot of one dish meals where it's just everything is in the same pot. I don't always do that, but honestly, during the week when life is just crazy and everyone's doing school and working and all of that good stuff, then I'll frequently do a one dish meal. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna add some beans. This happens to be kidney beans. I normally will make, uh, use whatever beans I have prepared on hand. It might be kidney beans, it might be garbanzo beans, it might be whatever. But I'm adding it for the, for the protein content, um, for the nutritional value of the bean, for the fiber of the bean. And for tonight, I'm using kidney beans, which I'm a fan of kidney beans actually. Um, but it also adds a really nice color when you are when you're preparing this dish now at home when i'm making my beans i use dried beans and i will soak them wash them soak them pour the water off then cook them and i always cook extra so let's say i'm making garbanzo beans because i'm making chana masala or some you know wonderful garbanzo dish i will cook extra and that extra then goes in my freezer. So when I want to make, say, hummus, all I've got to do is pick out that package of, 
of cooked chickpeas right out of my freezer. I do that with pinto beans, I do it with kidney beans, black eyed peas, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and so I bought a can of beans and those can of beans, I poured off the liquid and I rinsed them, all right, because I didn't have any already prepared. So that's that part. And I'm also a big fan of greens. I like to try to put greens in lots of places. So normally, to tell you the truth, I normally put kale when I do this. I like kale, uh, but I did not have any kale. So I'm using spinach, which my daughter actually prefers in this particular dish. I'm using frozen because that's what I had on hand. My point in telling you that is that recipes like this, you can you know, pick and choose and tweak them to, to how you like them. It's not set in stone. So I used cauliflower tonight. You could use broccoli. I used kidney beans. You could use any other kind of bean. And for the purposes of tonight, I'm using a little frozen organic spinach. Now this can be served as a main dish, say over brown rice or over groats. If you've never worked with groats, that's really fun. It could be served as a side dish. But for us, we normally make it the main dish and we'll have some sort of a, a grain with it. I really like the dark green, the light green, the white, the red, all of those nice colors that are bringing so much nutritional value to your food. And sometimes that's it. I cook it and we eat it and it's great. Occasionally though, I will grate in some uh, ginger if, if maybe I'm in the mood for a little something more Asian. And I would do that when I'm cooking the onions and the garlic. I would just simply grate, uh, peel the, the ginger and grate it in there, about a teaspoon, excuse me, a tablespoon worth, or a little nubbin, you know, that you can break off of, of that ginger. If you do that, it's gonna give it an added dimension. It does tend to, be, tend to, to lean it a little bit more in the Asian direction. And then I will often add turmeric. I like to put turmeric in as many places as I can. Turmeric is very good for you. It does enhance the color here. It's gonna give it some yellow color in there as well. So that, ginger, uh, that garlic and onion really permeates so many of the dishes that you make, particularly if you add a little salt when you're sauteing it. That is really such a key point in any of your savory kinds of dishes. So this is it. Now, if you were in an Indian mood, you could easily add this, you know, tweak your seasoning and give it a more of an Indian flair. If you're in the Asian mood, you can tweak those seasonings and give it a little bit more of an Asian flair. So you can play with it. And I do encourage you to play with your food because um, we have some pretty amazing things available to us here and lots of nutrition. So that is that. I hope you give it a try and I hope you enjoy it.